Today I have 11 foundational techniques that you can use it to really inform your prompt engineering, especially when you are prompting for writing specifically. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Jason. I'm the nerdy novelist. And after writing 14 books the traditional way, I've since gone on and created this channel, helping authors realize their dreams using tools like AI, but in a way that doesn't compromise their ethics or their creativity. And in this case, Prompt engineering is an incredibly important skill. It's a new skill, brand new skill that hasn't really been a thing before AI came here, but it is indeed a skill and learning to master it is one of those things that will get you better results. So tip number one out of 11 is probably the most important one here and it's deceptively simple, but it is be specific. I cannot tell you the number of times I get people asking me, like I'm not getting this thing out of the AI. It's not doing what I want. And I look and I can tell that they didn't ask it to do the thing that they want. You have to ask it, right? This is one of those things where AI is not like a ghostwriter. A ghostwriter could maybe infer a few things and just through their own understanding of storytelling could in just figure out what would make a good scene or good story based on your outline, right? But an AI can't do that unless what you want is specifically talked about in your prompting. And this is why people underestimate just how creative it, of a process it is to write with AI, because you have to be specific. You have to be thinking of all of these things. You have to know what happens in the scene, what happens uh, in the book overall for your overall outline. You need to know the character arc that the character goes through. The AI doesn't just know this stuff. It can't just make it all up. You have to inform it. And so that's why being specific is my number one tip, because if you're not specific, you're not going to get anything close to what you want. And this is why I will go to my grave saying this, that it doesn't matter how good AI gets. AI plus a human, especially an AI plus a well-informed human, a really skilled human in the art of storytelling, will always beat AI by itself or AI paired with a human that doesn't know what they're doing. I don't care how good the AI gets, an AI with a skilled human will always win out. So that brings me to tip number two, and that is to remind the AI occasionally about what you want. We know that every AI model has a context window. It might be anywhere from like 10,000 tokens to 400,000 tokens. It can be a wide range. But what people often don't realize is that even if they have such a large token window, it can still not forget, but sort of misplace the information that you are asking it to do. I tell people, and I'll get to this in a different tip, but I tell people like, don't water down your prompts by making them too big. Because even if technically an AI can handle that much information, sometimes it things get lost. If you imagine that your instructions are just like 1% of your overall prompt, you can't necessarily expect for that 1% to be remembered more and weighted in a way that is more important than the rest of your prompt. So I'm not just talking about being in the chat bot and reminding the AI about what its tasks are as you go along because it's forgetting the stuff that you used to talk about. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about making sure that the AI clearly understands the role that it is in. So that can be putting things inside of the system prompt so it always has those things top of mind. It can be repeating the task in multiple ways. I do this with style a lot where I will ask it to do something and I'll repeat the same instruction but like three times and phrased differently each time, because that way I'm really ensuring that the AI understands what it is I'm trying to get across. Number three, and this kind of goes along with the last one, is that less is usually more. What I see happen a lot is people put their entire book into their prompt. And first of all, you're going to significantly increase your cost for that. But the problem with putting an entire book or entire portions of your book inside of your prompt is that you're watering down the prompt. You're like creating a larger haystack to find the needle in. What is often more effective in this specific use case is to create a summary of your book. So if you have a whole book, let's say it's 75,000 words and you want the AI to understand what happened in that book because maybe you're writing the sequel or something like that, a better way to do it, more succinct and easier for the AI to understand is to create summaries of each chapter of that book so you have essentially an outline of what happened in that book. And then you include that outline, which will be smaller. It'll still be a lot of words, but it'll be significantly smaller than having the whole book in there. And 
when you do it that way, the AI will understand what you're looking for and what in the context of what happened in the previous book much better than if you just included the whole book. Plus, you'll save a little bit of money because putting a whole book inside of a prompt is expensive. This is one of the reasons why I'm a fan of Novel Crafter because Novel Crafter is a software that essentially does this for you where it will automatically filter out the stuff you don't need for the scene you're writing and it will bring in the stuff you do need. So it's really good at stuff like that. Tip number four is to use XML tags in your larger prompts. Even though everything I said about less is more in the last tip, I can typically still go up to maybe 20, 15, 20,000 words in a prompt and still be okay. But when you're getting into prompts that big, it really helps to break things down into little boxes that the AI can easily understand. And the best way to do that is with XML tags. This is actually a tip recommended by most of the actual developers of AI because most of these models were trained on a lot of web data and the web data is coded in HTML, which which uses XML tags, and that's how it's trained. So it really understands this concept really well. What an XML tag looks like is you get a word with two brackets, and then you have some content, and then beneath that content, you have the same word with another two brackets, uh, but there's like, there's a forward slash in, after the first bracket. And this is just a clever little way to kind of easily divide the information into little containers that the AI can understand. So you could have one for instructions. So you have an XML tag, an opening tag, and then you put your instructions there. Then you put a closing instructions tag after that. You can have one for style where you have like, okay, here's your opening style tag. Then you put all of your style information and closing style tag, and there you go. So it's a really neat way to keep things organized by the AI and helping it understand your story better. Tip number five is to experiment with adjusting parameters. Every model, especially if you're going through the API or through a service like Open Router, you can have access to different parameters like temperature there's also top p there's max tokens there's a whole bunch of different parameters that you can fiddle with you can't by the way fiddle with these inside of chatbots where it's just not allowed and a lot of these parameters are actually really good at helping you find the results that you want sometimes you might want something that's a, a little bit more creative a little bit more not sticking to the book it goes thinks out, outside of the box a little bit in that case you might want to raise the temperature a little bit or maybe you want something that's that doesn't think outside of the box and sticks very closely to exactly what you ask it to do, in which case you might want to lower the temperature a little bit. Things like that can really make a difference, and most people do not play with them, and you really should if you're testing out what works and what doesn't. Tip number six is to experiment with different LLMs. So every large language model is different. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. People ask me all the time, what's your favorite large language model? And while I do typically go to the Claude family as my overall favorites, I use different large language models all the time because there are different use cases where you might need some than others. Right now, I'm really enjoying GPT-5 for brainstorming and anything that requires just a hint more of creativity. But I still enjoy the Claude models for writing and then I also like some of the Gemini models for editing. Everything is a little bit different. They have strengths and weaknesses, and you can learn some of that by following people like myself. But for the most part, you may want to spend a little time experimenting with different LLMs. You should also think about experimenting with different prompts for different LLMs, because using the exact same prompt might work for one, but won't work for another. And if you tweak the prompt, then it would suddenly start working better for that model. And this is just one of those soft skills in the AI writing space that I can't necessarily give you any hard and fast rules on how this works. It's just something that comes with experience. You start to get the vibe of what each model does and what it's good at and how you might be able to improve on it by changing your prompt. Because sometimes I'll get something out of an LLM and I'll be like, that's not really what I wanted, but I'll bet I, if I change the prompt this way, it would make it better. And it does. And that's the kind of thing that I I can't really teach. I, it's just something you have to get used to. And playing around with these large language models, eventually you will get there. Most of the people inside of my community, link down below, by the way, have done this and are getting pretty good at it. Tip number seven goes along with what I just said, which is to test, test, test. Prompt engineering is not an exact science and it requires lots of iteration and improvement and testing. And I often get people coming to me and saying like, this doesn't work or that model didn't work for me. And I can instantly tell that they have not tested enough because so often, and, and this is especially true of a lot of the AI haters out there that say they can recognize AI slop immediately. I guarantee you that they can't. They're just looking at the stuff that is not well prompted. All you have to do 
is put a little bit more effort into your prompting and in testing it and improving it. And you can get something that doesn't sound anything like the so-called AI slop that those people are looking at. So always be testing, whether you're testing your prompts, testing the LLMs, uh, testing with different parameters like this. This is probably one of the most important tips that I have for you. Tip number eight is to break your larger tasks into smaller steps. I mentioned putting an entire book inside of your prompt. And uh, that's something that's not very efficient with your prompting because you're trying to do too much. So let's say you want to create a summary of that book. Well, you could take that entire book, put it into a large language model and say, summarize this book chapter by chapter. But I found that almost every time that I do this, even with some of the bigger large language models, it can't do it. The reason is, I mean, it'll give me something that roughly approximates a summary of the book, but it might miss chapters. It might get the order wrong, it might number the chapters incorrectly, like it gets a lot wrong. And that's because you're asking it to do too much with a enormous watered down prompt. Instead, a better way to go is to take one chapter at a time and say, take this chapter, summarize it, give me character information, give me world building information, you know, have it sort of like list out all of this stuff. And you do that for every chapter. And then once you have that uh, condensed version of information, it is much easier for the AI to say, okay, now create a summary of this character and their character arc in the story, or create a summary of this world building element, create a timeline of events in the story, because you have broken it down into smaller tasks. And now it's capable of doing a lot much more efficiently than if you were to just go straight to the entire book and say, make me a story Bible out of this, it just doesn't work. Tip number nine goes back to a framework that I created. And when I initially created this, it was kind of like innovative and on the front lines of AI. These days, it's a little bit more simplistic, but it is absolutely an important principle to understand as you are going about and creating your prompts. And that is the FITS formula, F-I-T-S. This stands for framework, identity, task, and style. The framework is pretty straightforward. Every AI thrives on structure. If you can provide some kind of structure, even if it's just make me a list of titles that have a blank of blank and blank format, you know, something simple like that, just giving it that little bit of structure actually increases its creativity. And I even created, like I, I wrote a whole book called The Plot Module, which is essentially a giant structure that I designed specifically to outline stories with AI. Even though I think when I wrote the book, I only have one chapter about AI in that book. It's mostly a, a tool for authors, but I designed it in such a way that it works really well with AI because it is so rigidly structured. So that is the kind of thing that you want out of the framework. The I stands for identity. It's usually a good rule of thumb to give the AI an identity like you are an expert editor, you are a best-selling author, stuff like that tends to narrow down its field of focus because remember these models are general models that can do lots of things besides writing. So we want to just narrow it down to the specific field of play where we want it to be and uh, doing that with the identity is how you do that. The T stands for tasks and that's the most straightforward of the bunch. It's just here's what I want you to do. And then the S stands for style. You're not always going to need style for everything, but often when you're writing, especially with AI, you want it to write it in a specific way. And the instructions on how to write in a specific way is what your style looks like. It can be everything from like avoid show, don't tell, or rather do show, don't tell, to actually giving it like 5,000 words of your own writing to act as a model for it to imitate, that sort of thing. So that's the FITS framework. Another framework I developed is called the Fractal Technique, which I use quite consistently on myself and is kind of the basis for most of the prompting and how that all works just from a global level. The fractal Technique means that you start out small and get bigger over time. So I usually start with some brainstorming and then I'll uh, take all of those brainstorming elements and format it into a synopsis. And then from the synopsis, I'll build uh, into an outline. And then from the outline, I'll take an individual scene and create a scene brief from that. And then from the scene brief, I'll actually take that and write the whole thing. And that's basically how the fractal technique works. You just start small and you slowly work your way up and bigger and bigger and bigger until you've got the whole thing. This kind of goes along with that idea of breaking things down into smaller tasks. All right. And last but not least, tip number 11 is to spend time actually interacting with the AI. Don't just expect your 
your prompts to be the be all and end all of writing with AI, because sometimes you get the best results after going back and forth a bit with the AI. This is especially true if you're using a chat bot where it's easier to kind of go back and forth in that way, where you might be spending more time in the brainstorming and outlining stages inside of the chat bot. I admittedly don't use this technique as much when I'm actually writing the story, but when I'm outlining or brainstorming, I could be like, okay, yeah, I like that idea, but can we add a little bit more of this in there? And uh, maybe can you rewrite it with this and this and this? You can ask it questions. You can ask for follow-ups. You can ask it to rewrite with uh, different feedback. And you get this feedback loop that can really, by the time you're done with it, create something that's entirely unique. If you're just giving it one prompt, what happens is the AI looks at that one prompt and it creates a probability model of what would be the most likely thing to say given that prompt. And that's fine, but it can be very generic and have problems with it. And you might also get the same results again if you tried the same thing. But if you're going back and forth like this, you're adding quite a bit more of your own humanness and your own creativity in there that just makes it unique in a way that you're not going to really come across those results again unless you walked through the exact same process blow by blow and even then it's unlikely that you'd get quite the same results and so you get a much more organic and a much more interesting output when you do it this way and those are my 11 basic prompt engineering techniques if this was helpful for you i'd invite you to check out our one membership down below and there's a silver membership if you want to check that out it's a small one-time fee that looks good for you. You can uh, move up to the gold membership, which right now I'm designing to be the single fastest way to get to 20 bucks for every author who goes through the program. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check that out down below and I'll see you there.